Would you like to know what is the best wireless audio transmitter and receiver? I produce over 50 different YouTube channels, hundreds and hundreds of episodes for YouTube every single week, and there is a device that I love and I'm excited to share with you. So I've been filming on YouTube for about a decade and I wanna show you what I started with. So you might hear me move this, or this is the backup auto, so you probably won't. But see, it's, it's on a boom arm. This is the Zoom H2N. Now this is a great microphone, but now this is what I use for secondary audio. It's out of the shot, it's great, it's wonderful quality. Like me, this close to the microphone is fantastic, but you can see, I'll move it back out of the shot. You can see I'm also wearing a lav mic right here on my lapel and it's wireless. For the longest time, I avoided wireless because I didn't want to deal with signals going out or having to deal with batteries, rechargeable, replacing those. I used a Rode shotgun mic. I used to have that on top of my camera. That would be a third backup audio, but Rode came out with a wireless system. This is called the Rode Go 2. This is our second version and it has two transmitters. So this one here, I'll turn it on so you can see the lights on the screen. The one that has the display on the top, this is the receiver, and then we've got two transmitters here. I've actually got two sets. So this is my second set. This is not the set I'm using for this video, but I have one of these transmitters in my pocket with the lav mic going through my shirt down into my pocket, plugged into this thing. And it transmits to the camera. And so I have another, another receiver on top of the camera with a wire like that. And then this just goes into the microphone port on the camera. These things are wonderful. They're so reliable, they're so clear. We monitor the audio and it's very, very rare that we have any issues. The battery life is great. They're so small and it's amazing to me how long they last. Typically we'll film all morning and then we'll still have battery left, but we'll just charge them at lunchtime. And so they last the whole rest of the day. Let me grab one of the transmitters here. There's actually a microphone on the top. And so I see a lot of loggers that will just have this mic and you can put a little piece of dead cat fur on the top there. That's just what it's called, but it will muffle out the, the wind and stuff. It's got a clip here. So that's how you clip the receiver on the top of the camera, or I could just clip it onto my shirt or something like that. So vloggers love these as well. And this microphone's pretty good quality, uh, but the size is a little big. If I were to clip it on my shirt, it's, it's definitely a lot more visible than my lav mic. Now, something that's great is having two trans transmitters is if you're doing an interview, you can have both signals go into the camera and have one be right and one be left, or you can record them both in stereo, but having two mics that go into one receiver is just so convenient. I've never had any issues with these, but I read about somebody having issues saying, you know what, you need to update the most recent software once you buy this. So you open up the package and then I just followed the instructions and found out how to update it. So it worked. Again, I've never had any problems but I did that update and it's been great. I would never monitor these mics. So to make sure that we had several backups so that we would always be covered, I usually put two mics on the boom arm. I would check them up front to make sure that the audio quality was good and I would just trust. The problem is if, if you change your distance from that, the audio quality changes, but I'd also have a third backup. I had a shotgun microphone on top of the camera so I'd have the two that were kind of primary plus a third backup option. Well, now I use this boom arm as my backup option and my primary is the lab that feeds directly into the camera. It is so convenient to have the main audio feed directly into the video. It makes editing easier, but now I always have my team monitor. So my videographer Corbin, he's wearing headphones right now. It's plugged right into the camera. Then he can let me know to take a step back, right? And if there's anything that ever happens with the audio, we can know about it. Another thing that I love about using a lav mic and having the microphone so close to me is, I don't know if you can hear it right now, but there's actually yard work going on right now outside the window, leaf blowers and edgers and whatnot. And it really muffles the sound out. Like you could probably hear it a little bit, but maybe you would have noticed before. Now that you know my recommendations for audio and what I like to use, in the next episode, I teach you the best vlogging camera for YouTube.